as we remember today the many who have died for the cause in which they passionately believed, and especially those who gave their lives in conflict in order to purchase our liberty and freedom. Let us pause and reflect on their sacrifice and service and give thanks for what they accomplished for us. A pause is somehow more than just standing in silence, although silence is how we approach it. Silence is in the absence, whereas a pause is an action or a deliberate inaction. It allows space within the ordinary for something extraordinary. In the communion service, we enter into another remembrance of a young man who gave his life. As we pause before this, our altar, and share a spiritual communion, we somehow enter into the heart of he who lived and died, who suffered physical and mental torment, who fought against sin and hypocrisy. His life becomes our life, and his death our deaths. And because of his resurrection, our hope in eternal life. As we pause, may we this day experience something of the extraordinary breaking through. Let us pray. We come to worship you, our God, who is good and just and true. You created and sustain our world and love us, though we fail you. We remember this morning all who have given their lives in the struggle for justice and peace, all who suffer in war and conflict, and all who live in terror. We ask for guidance and blessing that we may do your will, and that all peoples may acknowledge your kingship and reign. Amen. Amen. Today, as we always do, we meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Let us pray for grace, saying, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Forgive us when we live as if we were rich without you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Forgive us when we settle for our own satisfactions. Christ, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called God's children. Forgive us when we resist the way of peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We respond to God's mercy by singing the Gloria. Thank you. 
presence of the Lord. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We light our first candle to remember all those who suffered and died in the wars of the last century. We light this second candle, calling to mind all those caught up in the wars of the present day. We light this third candle to pray for justice and we light this fourth candle for peace recalling the words of Jesus in the gospel thank you Claire for bringing the scriptures to us this morning at that time, Michael, the great prince, who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool, because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, opened for us through the curtain, that is, his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of the Lord.
mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. And Jesus asked them, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, what will this be? And what will the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, there will be famines, but this is the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May it be given to me to speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Year after year, folk from this parish have come on this Sunday to the memorials erected in our churchyard and here behind the font in memory of those who fell in the two world wars. Year after year the British Legion lowered the standard as we stood in silence on Armistice Day. Year after year the poppies were worn and every year seems to bring an anniversary when we remember some specific act of service and sacrifice. This year marks 100 years of the British Legion. But last year was different. Some have suggested that our act of remembrance should be wider, to remember those who have died in the pandemic that, in my view, would be quite wrong. For Remembrance Sunday is about something entirely different. This year, during the main service at St Andrews, we tell something of the life of a few of those who are recorded here on our memorials. Like trooper David Frederick Cook, of the lifeguards who lived at 140 The Street, Rushmere. Born in the middle of the First World War, Trooper Cook died of his injuries in October 1945, aged 28. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. We try to give some context to the many names we read on the memorials, that those names would be not just engravings on a wooden board or letters in the stone, but become a game for us, the young men full of their dreams and aspirations, who defended this country in its hour of need, and who paid the ultimate price. In 2021, there are many fewer who have living memory of those who laid down their lives. And when this generation dies out, there will be fewer still. It was the hope of everyone in 1945 that we should see an end to such wars. But in truth, the world is very rarely without war somewhere on the globe. In the 3,423 years 
of recorded history. There have only been 268 years where peace has reigned. Indeed, since 1945, there have only been 26 years without war and an estimated 51 million people died as a result of warfare between 1945 and the millennium. That awful figure goes on increasing. Many of us remember the Falklands War 39 years ago and how the British became involved in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And who can forget the processions of hearsts through Wooden Bassett. People lined the streets to honour the bravery of the fallen service personnel. But we must never forget the misery of the millions of civilians who get caught up in conflict, like Janet, Ellen, Carey, the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Frederick Carey, who died on the 3rd of November in 1943 in Ipswich Borough Hospital, having been fatally injured when a large bomb hit an Anderson shelter in Elm Road, Russia. Janet was six years old. We remember, in order to bring the past into the present, to show those who have never known conflict and have enjoyed the freedoms of the peace of this country since 1945, how that was paid for. The Gospel reading for today contains a chilling prediction from Jesus. Not one stone shall be left upon another. Sadly, that terrifying sight is all too familiar the effects of war. Jesus' words are so grim as we think on these things. On this Remembrance Sunday, Jesus is living in the deep truth that he knew in his heart that human societies fall into conflict. He knew that from scripture and history. Behind Jesus' realism lies a deeper understanding that our hope is not based on our capacity as humans. He points these four disciples sitting with him opposite the temple in Jerusalem, away from their earthbound preoccupations. The understanding he invites them to is the reality of the divine, and no matter how difficult it was to discern, they must pay attention to it in seeing the reality of God would ultimately affect their service, opening the way for others to have a living hope. This is their story, shown in the Gospels and throughout the Acts of the Apostles. Out of these birth pangs would come God's kingdom in all its fullness. I draw some comparisons with the names on our memorials. We do not know so much about the individuals, but because of what they did, and countless others have given in sacrifice, the world has hope and relative peace. Many of the first century followers of Jesus, some just names, many are not recorded, but because of what they have given, the world can have hope and no real peace. This remembrance season coincides with COP26 conference. Many of us carry these great matters in our hearts. In holding the lives of our neighbours before God, can we pray that the earth shall be full of the knowledge of God as the waters cover the sea? the chilling prediction of Jesus may be where we start today, but through him and all that he has done for us and the whole world, we can be led into a new heaven and a new earth where he is Lord of all. This is not the fruit of human optimism, but is based on the sure promises, the generous self-giving of God, 
our commitment then is to work for peace. Amen. We pray for the church. We pray, O oh God, for the church in the world of today, that it may be true to its gospel and responsive to the needs of mankind, that it may conserve what is good in the past and reach out boldly to the future, that it may care for the individual and help to change society and that it may have a growing unity without sacrificing all variety of response to your grace. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On this day of remembrance, O oh God, we recall those who have died in the service of their country, and we pray for the peace of the world in which we live. Guide the leaders of this and of every nation and give them understanding of your righteous will that the tragedy and horror of war may be avoided for the coming generation, that men and women may be able to live in the freedom and fellowship of your kingdom. And as the COP26 climate conference comes to its conclusion, Help all governments to honour the commitments made 
that we may be good stewards of your creation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of war, for the injured and disabled, for the mentally distressed, for the homeless and refugees displaced by warfare, for those who have lost livelihood and security, for those who have lost husband or wife, father or mother or children, for those whose faith in God has been weakened or destroyed, and for those who have no hope in Christ to sustain them in their grief. Almighty God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted by death or by life, comfort those for whom we pray and fulfil in them the purpose of your love and bring us with them to your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we meet here in the presence of God our Father, we bring into his presence those in this parish who have asked for our prayers. We pray for Janet, Ellen, Janet, Mary, Betty, Nefat, Anne, Mark, Fiona, Rene and Margaret. And we bring before you the families and friends of those who have recently died. Catherine Day, Barbara Miller, Susan Davies, Arthur Nichols, Roger Barnes, David Gillard, Diane Goulding, John Stroud and Peggy Kenworthy. Our prayer for them this morning is that they may receive comfort, hope and the recovery of health. Take our thoughts and prayers and use them to further your week work of healing today, strengthening us and guiding us and all nations in your way of love and peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, as the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside and now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so may your whole church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner and gives dignity to the despised. In his face, your light shines out, floods the lives of goodness and truth, gather into one in your kingdom, a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and singing.
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread, and why not, Lord, may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine and again he praised you. Gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint Christopher, Saint Andrew and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Be assured we are one as we pray together this prayer 
for a spiritual communion. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, as we participate, participate with your people in these holy mysteries, we pray you now to grant your gift of spiritual communion with trust in your faithfulness and your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Be still, my soul, the Lord is on thy side. Bear patiently the cross of grief for pain. Lead to thy God. holy meal you feed us with the freely sacrificed life of your son jesus christ our lord use this day of remembrance to nourish us in the ways of peace that we may transform the wastelands of war into a home for all your people amen we share our act of remembrance with 
those who gathered at the memorial here in Rushmere on Armistice Day. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Let us offer our thanksgiving to Almighty God for the victory achieved on land and sea and in the air and for the liberation of so many from the cruelty of occupation and oppression. Let us give thanks for the heroism and courage of those whose service in the armed forces and continue to do so, who worked on the home front in civil defence, hospitals and relief agencies, in factories, shops and farms. Let us pray for those who endured captivity, torture or death, that others might be free. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in conflict, those whom we knew and those whose memory we treasure and all who have lived and died in the service of humanity. old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. We will remember them.
make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, those you love and those who love you, wherever they may be, today and until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. The service is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.
When hate grows strong.